what I actually want to, the verse I want to go to is going to be out of Matthew chapter 7. And it's going to be verses 21 through 23. And I'm going to read it out of the amplified version. And it says, and this is Jesus talking. And he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. You who act wickedly disregarding my command. And actually the New King James Version says, um, you who practice lawlessness. And so... So often we ask the question, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? And yes, that, that is a very important question. We need to be asking people that question. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? But we know relationships go both ways. So it's not just do you know him? Because even Lucifer knows him. He was there in the Bible. But does he know you? Because there's only two things that you're gonna hear on the day of judgment. It's either well done thy good and faithful servant or to depart from me, I never knew you. Now I know you're probably wondering, okay, how can Jesus say he never knew me when he created me? He knows how many hairs are on my head. He, he knows me. Well, he created you. Every manufacturer knows their creation. They know every detail of it. But there's more to this than we even take time to realize. And so um, another scripture I want to look at is Luke chapter 6, verses, verse 46. And this is out of the New King James. And it says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? And the Amplified says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? And this is Jesus talking. He's saying, why do you call me Lord, and you don't do the things that I say? So pretty much why are you calling me your Lord and you're disobedient to the things I've told you to do? There's no point in calling me Lord because I'm not your Lord if you're not going to be obedient to what I'm telling you to do. And like I said, we want to ask people, do you know Jesus? We, we absolutely want to make sure we're still asking that question um, because that is the question we need to ask the sinner. But when it comes to the believer, it needs to be, does he know you? And he knows you through your obedience. And when, when was the last time that we even asked ourselves, am I being obedient to the word? Am I being obedient to the call of God on my life? And like I mentioned before, relationships go both ways. It's not just you know him because anybody will say, oh, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. That's great. That, that's great. Or people will be like, I, I believe in God. Well, scripture says even Satan believes there's one God. Like even he believes that. And it says even the demons believe and they shudder. But shouldn't we know him more than that? Shouldn't we have that relationship and that revelation, not just I know him? I mean, and of course Satan knows him. He, he was there. He's seen heaven. He was in the Bible times. He We read about his story in the Bible. So yes, even Satan knows, but does that really matter? Is Satan going to be in heaven? No. He's not. So just to say, oh, I know Jesus or I go to church. That doesn't mean anything. Do you have that relationship? And does he know you through your obedience to the word? And even Satan knows the Bible better than most Christians. I mean, he lived it. So, and how many of us are really in our word the way we should be? Like, you know, Pastor Mary talked about on Friday night connecting to the word, living it out, walking it out, not just having um, head knowledge, but how do you know it in your heart? Do you have it in your heart? I mean, I think it's called, my pastor called it a mental ascent. Like, you know it and you're just like, yeah, you know, I know that. Like, I know. Or, you know, you're trying to tell somebody something like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's like, okay, you know, but how come you're not, you're not doing it? <laughs> you know, you know the word, but are you doing the word? So even just to know it, um, and even Satan quoted part of the Bible to Jesus when he tried to tempt him. So, you know, he knows it. 
And the only way for a deception to work, my pastor's been in an awesome series on this on Wednesday nights in our Holy Ghost University, but he's been talking about um, faith to overcome in the last days and deception. And how in the last days, the only way deception works, there's got to be a little bit of truth in there. Like, it's got to, like, that sounds right. Like, that really does, like, it sounds like it, it lines up with the word. But you've got to know the truth. Know the truth and know what the word says. Just because it sounds good. Okay, but is that what the word says? Is that specifically what it says? Because Satan will even come and he'll he'll cause us to question because it's the first oldest trick in the book, but it works. Because even when he approached Eve, it was, well, did God say? And then you start, well, did God say? And you start to misquote and misremember what he said as opposed to, no, I know what he said. I know what his word says. Or let me go back and look at it. And don't think, I want to throw this in here too real quick. Don't think just because someone is a popular preacher or someone's popular or it sounds cute that it's the truth. Because there's a lot of cute quotes that go around, but we know cute quotes are not always the truth. And most cute quotes, I mean, most cute quotes are not truth. They're not the whole truth of the word. There might be little bit parts of it where they sound good or they make you feel good, but it's not what the word says. So just because someone popular said something, I will challenge you guys, go look it up in the word and see what the word has to say. Don't believe it just because they say it. And I've been fortunate, the pastors that I'm under now and even the church I went to before have always said, go look it up in the word for yourself. Don't just because I'm up here, don't just take my word. Go read the word and know it for yourself. Because when those times come, you have to know that you know that you know that you know that you know the truth of the word. So sorry, that was a little off topic <laughs> there, but I wanted to throw that in there of how much we need to, to know and just love the truth, know and love the truth of the word. And even in the, in the, um, you know, does he know you? Because what Satan wants us to do, everything he tries to get us to goes against God, which is disobedience. It's pretty much everything Satan tries to get us to do. He tries to get us to disobey God and be rebellious. And think about this. Satan knows what heaven looks like. He's seen it. He knows how great it is. Do you think he wants you to have that? Do you think he wants you to go see the streets paved with gold? The gates of the, with pearls? Do you think he's going to be like, no, you know what? Go ahead. Go. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to enjoy that. No, he can't have it. He's a sore loser. If I can't have it, nobody can have it. And the way he, he hurts, God is through us. So think about that. Satan Satan knows what he's trying to keep you from, even in regards to, to what God has for you here in the earth, because it's not all about when you get to